Hello, my name is Marco Passia and I am a doctoral student in the group of Professor Carsten Born at the Institute of Organic Chemistry, RWTH Aachen University in Germany. Today it's my pleasure to give you an idea how we prepare sulfur 6 fluorides under solvent-free mechanochemical conditions using a mixer mill. If you are interested in the theoretical background, please check out our recent publication at ACS Sustainable Chemistry and Engineering or have a look on our homepage. For this exemplified transformation, we are using 0.5 millimol of sulfonyl imidazole 1A in combination with 1.4 equivalents of potassium bifluoride and 2.5 equivalents of acetic acid. The acid is already loaded in a PTFE milling jar. Then, a yttrium stabilized zirconia milling ball is added and used to distribute the liquid acid on the surface of the milling equipment. After the addition of starting material 1A, KHF2 is added carefully. Please be aware that hydrofluoric acid may be formed during the addition of KHF2 to the acid. Wear protective gloves and add all reagents inside a few mode. The jar is immediately closed and additionally sealed with an insulating tape. Now the jar is mounted onto the holder of the milling device. Check whether the milling jar is held securely. We are using a Reg Mixer Mill MM400 milling device. The reaction is conducted for a milling time of 90 minutes at a frequency of 25 Hz. After finishing the milling process, the milling jar is carefully removed and subsequently covered by a nitrile glove to cool the reaction mixture in an ice bath prior to opening. This was crucial to how we improved our reaction yield as sulfonyl fluorides are often characterized by high volatility. Another modification that proved to be beneficial for the reaction outcome is the addition of silica after the main milling. Firstly, silica is used to quench remaining potassium bifluoride and hydrofluoric acid that may have been formed. Secondly, it allows for easier handling of the crude mixture and transfer for purification. Upon opening the jar, please keep it inside a few mode. The jar is now closed, sealed again and then the reaction mixture is milled for another 5 minutes at the same frequency. Once again the milling jar is cooled in an ice bath prior to opening. While I am now collecting the powdery crude product, let me briefly comment on the modified reaction conditions for the synthesis of sulfon imiduyl and sulfoxyl fluorides. To obtain better conversion of these starting materials, the equivalents of KHF2 and acetic acid were increased to 2 and 3 respectively. Furthermore, the milling time was increased to 180 minutes for the synthesis of sulfon imiduyl fluorides. For the conversion of sulfoxyl imidat salts, external heating was required. To this end, the milling material was changed to stainless steel and an adjustable heat gun with a preset temperature of 250 degrees Celsius was mounted above the jar. This setup allows for continuous heating during the milling process. The purification of the desired sulfonyl fluoride can be achieved by simple silica plug filtration. First, 3 grams of silica are added to the column, followed by the crude mixture obtained after the milling process and a small layer of sand. Then the plug was rinsed with approximately 50 ml of the appropriate eluent, in this case a 4 to 1 mixture of n-pentane and ethyl acetate. Notably, the composition of the solvent mixtures were optimized based on the volatility of the products. Non-volatile compounds were purified with pentane ethyl acetate mixtures, partially volatile products with pentane MTBE and very volatile sulfonyl fluorides with mixtures of pentane and diethyl ether. Finally, the solvent is removed at reduced pressure either at 40 or 20 degrees Celsius water bath temperature depending on the volatility of the corresponding product. Then the product can be transferred into a smaller reaction vial and dried on high vacuum if the volatility allows. In our case, sulfonyl fluoride 2A is obtained as a colorless solid in high yield with a purity above 98%. In the end, I hope you enjoyed our small video guide and I would like to thank my co-authors Mostafa Amer, Joachim Demarel and Carsten Born for this great collaboration.